very much. I'm happy we're all here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Really stoked. Super good to be back doing this shit, you know? Being able to share music, that's all I ever wanted to do as a child. Oh, thank you. I fake it till I make it, brother. But, what's that?
was good. We're not the ones saying. And the ones saying, fuck. Yeah, 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 we're at the end. And the ones saying. I was like, this motherfucker from Canada better know the lyrics. I was getting pissed. That song, actually, you know where I got the name for that? It was about my friend. My, my, me and Joe said we had a friend by the name of Sean Gregonis. And Sean Gregonis recently passed away, and I was able to, to uh, spread his ashes out in the bay. And he was the guy that turned pretty much all of us onto punk rock in around 1978 when he moved into the neighborhood. And uh, kind of like a bittersweet thing, you know, he was did the whole skunks thing, then gave me the thing, and... And you know, when, when we were out in the boat and we are spreading his ashes, I'm with his sister and some other guys that we had grown up with, and he burned a lot of bridges, you know? And uh, he was just punk as fuck. He always just, you know... But when I was there and I was really feeling, you know, kind of what was going down, I kind of realized that if it wasn't for him, I would never have been set on the course that I was set on. And that music and the punk rock, besides my brother, you know, he was a big influence on me. And I always wanted to kind of write a song about him, but I didn't want to say little Sean was a punk rocker. So my cat was named Sammy at the time. <laughs> And Sammy, so here's the funny thing about, about Sammy. So I lived in a really shitty neighborhood in, in, in uh, West Oakland. It was uh, 26th and Adeline. And I was right across the street from a junkyard. And I was in the back room. Uh, there was this, it was a place in, in called Punks for Presses. And they used to do all the punk rock records for Lookout, shit, like all the pressing and all the stickers and all that shit for any bear, bands all over the world. Anyway, and uh, I was living in the back of the warehouse, and I heard this fucking cat. I don't know how I heard it, but I was, I'm like deep back in this warehouse, right? But I heard, is that a fucking cat? So goddamn loud. And I went outside, finally, I was with my friend John Reed. Went outside, and I see this cat, and there's fucking two dogs just trying to kill him. And he's fucking yelling. So I just picked him up. He was a little baby at the time. I picked him up, and I kind of, you know, got him out of there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have a fucking cat. <laughs> so then... I went out on tour, and then Kamala Parks, who was in Kamala and the Carnivore, she's like, hey, um, I need a place to live. And I said, okay. So she, she lived in my house, and then she's like, I really, and her and Sammy, like, fell in love. And I used to have this hole in my ceiling that I covered up with this Motorhead Orgasmatron poster, and the rats would eat through the poster and fall on my bed. Oh my I was God. in this loft, and then go sleep on my feet. And I wake up, and be like, what the fuck is that? It would be a fucking rat. But Sammy killed all the rats. Woo! Okay, good fucking cat, earning his keep, right? Well, Kamala and Sammy had a thing, so Kamala ended up, you know, taking the cat with him, and guess where she moved? She moved in with Mr. Matt Freeman. So Sammy then became Matt Freeman's cat, and Matt Freeman would go, bro, what's up with Sammy? I'm like, what do you mean? Every morning, I get a chewed up rat at the foot of my bed. I was like, He's doing his job at saying that he loves you. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me be the chewed up rat at the end of your bed tonight. <laughs> and say that I love you. Thank you very much for coming out. <laughs> this is the last song I'm going to do for you, not, for you tonight. I want you all to get a beer, enjoy yourselves, and remember... Like I said before, no one ever on their deathbed said, I wish I would have worked more. Love each other. I'm not trying to be all hippie and shit on you guys, but love each other, respect each other. We're all on this one place. It's called planet Earth. We can at least have the common respect that we're all human fucking beings having a human goddamn experience. So if you're angry, feel that anger. If you're sad, feel that sadness. If you're happy, feel that happiness. If you're in love, feel that fucking love because that's all part of being a human being. And guess what? Feel it now because one day you're going to fucking die. So no need to take it out on anybody else. What's that? I cannot sing that song now as a respectable 
the father of two who go to Quaker school. But anyways, thank you for your time, your patience, your voices, and your applause. Oh, 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 oh,